There you go. First elk with a bow. Couldn't be happier. I came from the mud, desert on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon. I could have a nice set up this man. <laughs> That's like a lazy boy, mountain lazy boy. Yeah. I should make a brand of backpacks called Lazy Boy. That's actually not a bad idea. Lazy pack. We're gonna get back and I'm gonna trademark that. <laughs> God damn it, Rob. Good idea is a good idea. We all know that you can't end up making the shot on whatever animal you want unless you can call that animal to within range. Well, fortunately, it's finally here. The elks start hitting the dirt, and we finally got one down. But, unfortunately, did not get the kill shot on camera. So, instead, I'm going to recreate and uh, give the exact setup on the terrain where it was to give you guys a little bit of education so you know what to look for so you can try to call on that bull your own. So let's get to it. Ideally, what you want to do is when you're trying to locate elk, you want to try to be hunting a population of vocal elk, right? Obviously, it's easiest to hone in on a bugling elk. But what if you run into a situation like we run into where the elk, they just shut up way too much hunting pressure and they're not going to call back like typically elk normally do. So we are went from plan a trying to call them plan b to glassing them we're on to plan c we're going to get ultra aggressive but in the right situations and in the right scenarios for instance we decided that uh, we're going to set up our camp right here at this uh little icon little camp icon that's where trevor and i set up camp the reason we chose this location is this area has everything that you need in order to find elk you're going to have elk in this area due to the fact that there is water. Elk need that water to survive just like everything else. They have secure food. They have patches of grass and open prairie intermixed within these uh, conifer trees. So they're gonna feel safe in a highly pressured area. They're not gonna be out grazing in the open. They're gonna be in these little, little pockets all around. And uh, elk are grazers. They're gonna be eating grasses. So you need to find an area like that, and we have that area right here highlighted in green. Lastly, you're gonna to need to find some bedding areas. These are areas where uh, the topography is gonna to flatten out or offer a difference in, uh, in change some variety in the, uh, the topography. For instance, in the areas highlighted here in red, you'll see uh, ridge top lines or uh, little benches where the terrain flattens out. All these areas are areas in which while looking at the map, seem to be areas in which elk will be bedding at. And it's about 1 p.m., so we are looking for elk in their beds. So it starts off, we're going to zoom in on this little area here. This is where Trevor and I uh, had some of this magic happen. And uh, we are going to focus on this area. So Trevor and I, we started off at camp, and normally if it was a typical scenario with elk that are very... Uh, very vocal, we would have let out a locator bugle in order to try to um, get an idea as to where any elk would be or if they want to play ball or not. But because they're not, we decided just to move in right away. We cross this creek and we end up on the downwind side of this bench area. 
And uh, it's important to be on the downwind side. So uh, obviously if you get scented, it's game over. You can sometimes fool elk's eyes. You can sometimes fool an elk's ears, but you can never fool their nose. So always play the wind. We uh, set up, had a nice little calling sequence, but unfortunately had no response. So we decided to move up further up towards the next bench area. It was at this time we set up on uh, this side of it due to the, uh, the wind direction once more. Uh, unfortunately, we started the calling sequence and the wind started to swirl every direction, which was pretty typical for the area we were hunting. It's uh, unfortunate, but it's just something we had to deal with. So we continued the calling sequence and uh, about two minutes in of a super, very hyper aggressive sequence, I uh, just happened to glance downhill and here was a nice five by five bull, just running full speed, ready to try to get up into the action. So I put down the bugle tube, attached my release, drew back and let one fly. And here's the action right after. Sure, it's a all the way through, too. You know, I thought I'd heard something back there, but I, I didn't want to like turn around too much. Dude, what a first fucking day! Oh, like my 15th day. <laughs> second before him. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I just want my big bull sounding like he's got a hot cow. Now with the saddle like trying to come up here and steal what I was doing. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. Oh, man. That's, that's what I was doing. I sound like a rocket. Dude, full send. I got some antiseptic stuff going on. 
about to cut up Alex in my mouth. Damn, it's that quiet. I think we should give him, give him half hour. I know I don't have long. I don't want to go far. I go far and I'll be dead right there. That's why I'm going to kind of die. I'm pretty sure I zipped the whole way through. Yeah, sure. I did. There was no fledging left. I saw the whole high long. There's, there's a punch like this is his shoulder. And like this is the top of his back. And then here, I didn't have a heart. Just pure lungs. Yeah. But this is because he was so fast. Actually, came back and he was like. I, I drew, I was excited, I'm tiny for the camera, I said, fuck it. And I was sitting right here, and my, my like, level, I was so far, like, this way, that I just focused, and as soon as I got a level, I was looking right at him, keep us good, and I was right on his, right on his, like, upper lawn, so I was, was he looking at you? Was he looking up, looking up this way? Oh, because he could hear the echo off of the... I was sounding like, I remember I told you these benches? Yeah, that's what they do, like, that's why our last setup was the same thing. They, they can't see. Up here, right. so like they have to run within range, and you set it just on the edge. And it's crazy because we have these swirling winds, yeah. but he's got to come close. So, oh my God. yeah, man, that ended so fucking. What what time did we leave camp? Like one o'clock? I shut my phone on my camera. Yeah, an hour, hour and ten minutes. <laughs> just up <stopped> camping. <laughs> Probably three quarters of a mile from camp. It's our second setup. Yeah. Oh my god. I gotta text. I gotta text. I gotta see how I get serious. I can't. I'm so. Even we, man, I have a good feeling about the shot, dude. I mean, yeah. It wasn't a long. It wasn't. It wasn't high. It was right in the lungs. Just like that. There was other elk with him too, you think? No. No. So he can run up. He's like the herd. Maybe the cows, but you want another cow. I don't know. He's. Big ass. No, I didn't have time to get a cone on. I just saw he's, he's big, big, legal. big frame, dude. Big frame. Yeah. It's like probably like that six by six guy on the wall in the house. Like big frame. Oh my god. That's crazy. Comes right behind us. See, that's what I told you. Like, I figured they were gonna set up high, but he was down low. And, like, that's the whole two person setup. Is I'm the I'm the bleed back, like I'm the safety, yeah. like I'm the one who's in case he shows up yeah. on the back side, but you were in the front spot, I think, the way. Yeah. Right. going right to where it went. Yeah. That's why I figured when we first set up, the wind is actually going up towards you, but it's yeah. just swirling. So yeah. I, I just like to look at this bench. Yeah. I just saw us on the map with Mercedes and we were walking way up there. Yeah. And I said we should get down here, but we didn't have enough time. We didn't have time, so this follow feel good. Oh. Guess what, baby? And Mercedes. Yeah, that's true, too. Dude, I'm excited you could see this. I wish Drew could have seen this so much. I wish I could have seen it. I wish Mercedes could have seen it. Yeah, dude, dude you were, you were, you're just so quiet. If you turn around, you would have seen it. You were right there. You were right there. You would have seen it. You were right there. See, I said you were, you were 60 yards from me. Because I'm 40 yards from you. Yeah. Me. You came 20 from me. So. Yeah. I set up in between two trails because I figured... It's a good idea. You know, he's, he should be coming down one yeah. or two. So, like, what, like what I did is pretty much where I drew, like he... I was putting on he came running up. I just saw white antler tips running over this right here. And like I said, didn't have any time to turn on the camera because he's coming quick. So I just attached my release and he got behind the section of trees. I drew back and he came and stood broadside right here. Whack. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh man. Alright. Yeah, did, did you see him go that way? Straight that way? He went back that way. Okay, because I almost thought I saw something going on that way when I was. Um, he went back and got over it. Hasn't turned back that way. That's where it was. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure the arrows went all the way through. We'll see if it's in a tree back there. So. Yeah. Go for it. What's up, guy? Chat. Dude, how's it going? Good. Dude. Did you, were you the one shooting or was it Trev? Uh, Trev was set up in the, the main spot. I had him up in front of me 40 yards. And this bull trickled around behind, and he came up this little hillside about 20 yards. I didn't even have time to turn the camera on, so I just drew back, and he's broadside. 
hit him high lung and he wheeled around quick and uh said we're getting him 30 we're gonna get him i'm pretty sure he's done already but give him 30. uh i think but, i think so but i'm i don't want to go push him so i'm just gonna wait 30. Where'd you guys go? so you know where our camp was we went uh, you know how and then like me you and mercedes went up that ridge top and we like went to the south so if instead of us you know how we crested over that hilltop in the darkness on the on the eastern side of that there's like a flat bench area that's that's where he was i was set up on like the very back side of like a super steep area and i just started sounding like a herd bull and a satellite fighting over a cow and he came running in because he's a pretty big bull so he was like he wanted a piece of the action I heard this. Five by five or six by six? I have no idea, dude. He came in so fast. I just saw the frame. He's it was, got a big frame. It was literally probably five minutes of calling or less. Yeah, it was like five minutes calling. We set up right in the bedding area. It was literally we, we set up camp. We've been hunting for an hour and fifteen minutes. So that's nuts. Yeah, that's I know. So fucking nuts. Dude, it's nuts. It's this morning they were bugling like crazy out on that private land that we like by the mm -hmm. trailhead, and I was just thinking like, oh, hopefully it turns back on. And he didn't make a noise. He just came running. He didn't make a single noise. He came running and looking for a fight. Like you can tell, he's all aggressive and ready to go. But yeah, he didn't. He didn't tell me he was coming. I didn't hear him running. I just saw the antler tips over a hill, like kind of crested the hill, and just drew back, and that was it. So yeah, I'll, I'll send you some pics, man. I'm pretty sure I passed all the way through. There was no fletching sticking out. There's just a hole in his lung, and I heard the arrow crash through on the other side. I think so. Pretty I'm sure. Find your arrow. Uh, dude, it's way down a cliff. There's no way I'm gonna find it. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's super steep. How, well, how long ago did you shoot him? Um, 15 minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I give him all the 30 on high long, but if you think you heard him crash, I bet he's done. You I'm, have plenty of light to go find him tonight. Yeah, I'm still just gonna, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna play it safe. These mountains yeah. are steep. I don't want to run him somewhere and have to drag him out. Nice. Yeah. Well, hey, buddy. Congrats. I mean, I'll send you some pics. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Keep a tight ass. Uh, you so too, buddy. When you find him. I will. See you, buddy. Bye. I'm so excited to get 47. See, there's also like a little flat up there that looks like it opens up to like a, not a meadow. But it, 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 so it's, it's a, actually it's like a bench. That's what I thought they were going to be on. There's like a dark timber bench right above there. Yeah. And dark, dark timber bench is talking about. So Trav was set up, pretty much. Trav was set up right on this main trails. Trav was set up right about here, 40 yards. And up the hill here, there's a dark timber bench, another one. We're kind of on a little bit of a flat spot here. And yeah, so I, pretty, I thought the way the wind was blowing, this, the wind was blowing towards Trevor in this direction. So we set him up on the downwind side and wind's just swirling like crazy here. These San Juan mountains are crazy. The wind's so hard to predict. So yeah. it was just zipping left, right, up, down, everywhere. So yeah. I mean, and then that I, surprised me that he came from that direction. Me too. Like, how steep that is. We literally walked up that well, edge. Like our thermals kept swirling that way too. But I think because it's so warm, they take off. Like they, if they get, oh. they dump off the cliffside and they just yeah. get launched in the atmosphere right sure. now. Cause it's yeah. 1 30, 2 o'clock. All right, well, it's time. I'm gonna shut off the camera. We're gonna give it another 15 minutes. We're gonna get it done. Hopefully. <laughs> Found some blood. There's blood. I'm just gonna mark the tree right here. And we'll keep moving. Right next to his tracks. Yeah, that's where I was falling down. Mm -hmm. You can see he's starting to kind of like crash and fly through this. Oh, here's a good chunk of lung blood right here. That's lung blood. There's more. Yeah, he's starting to open up. More, more. You can follow his blood from there too. Some here. Yeah. Big quag. We'll go slow. We'll mark it. So we got here. Here. I see him. See? He's dead. You see him? Oh, yeah, Dude. it's right there. Oh, yeah. Dude, no freaking way. Oh, my God. 
God. We got it done, baby. Dude. There we go. Oh, yeah. He was down quick. Yeah, he's done. There we go, man. All right. Oh, get in here. Get in here. Here we go, baby. We got her done. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, Rob, let's hear the story again. Well, we uh, set up. Bring the camera a little closer. We set up. Uh, we set up our camp about an hour ago. Oh, I guess two hours ago now. Set up camp about an hour. And uh, we got some water, kept working towards uh, uh, on this mountain face. Knew there was a bench over here. We set up once, calling, nothing happened. Got a little windy. So we got closer. Set Trevor up, who's on the camera right now, in the uh, what I thought was the prime location due with the direction of the wind, on the main trail. And I was just the uh, the backside, just in case the, the elk came circling around behind us and started uh, calling, you know, it sounded like a bull and a cow together and then I sounded like a herd bull came in and it sounded like they were fighting, fighting over a hot cow and this dude came running up all by himself looking for a fight, all quiet. So, yeah, I'm super excited though. First elk with a bow. Couldn't be happier. Wow, that's a nice bull, man, five by five. I love it. He's going on the wall for sure. T Rev, the butcher. <laughs> All right, and then I can actually sit, and it won't be like if I take a break, yep. it, won't, it won't like collapse and push the whole pack back up. Yep, It'll be sweet. Okay. All right. Can you grab that band aid wrapper right yep. there? Yep. Sweet. I'll grab that. He tried to stop the bleeding. Yeah, but he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's great. <laughs> Put it in my pocket.